me, Chris. I'm mm -hmm. really delighted to have the opportunity to chat with you on this inaugural <laughs> Planners Web conversation. Chris Holler is the CEO of Urban Interactive Studios, which is a sort of multi-platform public engagement firm based in Denver, Colorado, that but doing work nationally and internationally. So they, I have used Chris's platform and tools for a long time. He's got some great stuff to offer, so I'm really delighted to be able to talk with Chris today. So Chris, you want to go ahead and say hello? Yeah, thank you for having me. This is an exciting opportunity. Oh, cool, cool. Well, Chris, you know, I know a little bit of your background, mm -hmm. but for the folks who are watching, why don't you give us a sense of kind of where you come from professionally, uh, what, what has sort of led you to be involved in and, and really become one of the leaders in the online public engagement space? Yeah. Because that's, that's a little unusual for a lot of, a lot of folks. <laughs> yeah, so um, it all started probably 10 years ago when I went to planning school in, in Berlin, Germany, and um, I was paying the bills by being a web developer on the side and always uh, have been interested in, in that part, but didn't pursue it at that point professionally. And um, the at some point, those two um, interests really sort of um, came together, um, especially with a job at ZebraLock early on in Berlin, which uh, was a company that was at sort of the forefront of online engagement using forums to uh, engage citizens in planning projects and also public budgeting. And so probably in 2003 we, or four, we hosted some of the um, early sort of public engagement uh, public budgeting process uh, uh, sees online in, in Berlin, Lichtenberg. And that really sort of was the start to this and to this interest and eventually um, came to the United States and worked in a couple of different positions, both on the technology side, being uh, somebody who codes and implements these uh, tools and also on the process side, for example, with Public Agenda in New York as an online engagement manager trying to figure out the right online components for their face-to-face -face based approaches. And so um, one of the core interests of mine has always been how can we um, bring together both the online and the face-to-face -face elements in a public engagement process because both of those have um, uh, great value and also different strengths. And so um, as such, uh, three years ago, I. Um, started Urban Interactive Studio really as a consulting business to help um, local governments and, and planning firms uh, to, to put the pieces together to build sort of cross-media or multi-channel approaches to public engagement. And as a, a big part of that was um, building tools that we felt like at that point were missing. And, and that's something we're going to talk a little bit about later, but that's really sort of the start to sort of a suite of online tools. And obviously this has grown um, when we first started, or when I first started, that was exciting because it was before uh, Google Maps, it was before Web 2.0 was the term and things like that. But um, Really, the field has come a long way, uh, even though some of the fundamentals really haven't changed that much, even though people think that well, some of those things have come up recently. Um, there's actually a long sort of history and, 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 um, and I would say sort of best practice that has developed over the last, I would say, 10 years. Okay, great. What do you see when you look around today and, you know, you, you, you really have had a front row seat for this evolution. And, and because you started in Europe, where online public engagement sort of took off a lot mm -hmm. earlier than it did in the U.S. We're actually relatively late coming to this field in mm -hmm. the U.S. compared to a lot of other places. You, um, you know, you've kind of you you you've seen a good deal, and, you, and you've kind of witnessed a good deal of this evolution that a lot of us are still sort of barely catching up with. As you look at what's going on today, and you look at the local governments you work with, the regional agencies you mm -hmm. work with, and you look at them sort of grappling with this online, uh, how do we engage people, how do we work online, how do we work in person, what do you see, what do you see going on? What, do you, what kind of challenges, what kind of trends do you see evolving in that space? So one, I actually think the, the uh, from my perspective looking at this, one of the interesting things is that the um, 
the attitude towards online tools has, has changed uh, tremendously. When we first started that, as I said, 10 years ago, there was a lot of pushback. It's like, this is useless. Nobody's using that. Um, but all the clients we work with now, uh, and I see this across the board, um, are uh, aware that this is something that their constituents, that their stakeholders now expect. It's something that, and I think that that adds pressure to them because they realize, well, we might not be as knowledgeable, or might not have the right capacity in house right now, or we might not, uh, we might need to start experimenting with things that we weren't initially comfortable with. Um, but I think it's a whole different attitude. Um, that obviously helps the field in general. Um, personally, I think the uh, what really uh, is one of our co core focus uh, right now is how do we make things work across different device devices. I think we're uh, in an area now where uh, soon a lot uh, more people will be using and accessing the web uh, on their sm uh, smartphones and mobile phones rather than their desktop computers. Uh, same goes for tablets. And so the question is, uh, how do we present information? How do we uh, design uh, user interfaces for public engagement that work across devices? And I think what's often overlooked is that is less of a technical question and more of a um, experience question. I, we, we think as mo uh, about mobile as a, more as an experience than as a technology, meaning if we want to engage people while, while they're out and about, um, we need to provide, we need to figure out how they can discover our process, meaning what materials do we need. Um, we, we sort of have a suite of tools that we now call Reply Here that focuses on sort of what are the postcards, the flyers, the um, advertisements, the elements in the built environment that people can discover that make them curious, that make them take out their cell phone out of their pocket or purse and uh, and then uh, get engaged and maybe answer some questions that we have or participate in a dialogue and things like that. And, and I think there's not that much knowledge about these things yet. People still think, uh, and even though we've known this for a long time, that build it and they will come doesn't work. Um, I think there's a new, um, there's new requirements to do that um, on, on mobile phones and, and to get people engaged that way. And, I, and you're really, I think, one of the first ones that I've seen, at least in this public engagement space or the, uh, what's the term, civic hacking space, mm -hmm. the, the Code for America type mm -hmm. work, you're really, I think, one of the first to be thinking about and, and trying to figure out how to make that bridge between the physical environment, you know, where we live every day, and how to make that a relevant connection back to that online interface. Because, you know, as much as I feel sometimes like I live my life with my, you know, nose stuck on my phone, the reality is that that's not how we discover the world. And if we're interested in planning, urban design, um, community development, sorts of issues, that's where that's happening. So right. that's, I think there's tremendous value to really have people, to draw people into the participation process um, when they're experiencing the things that we are planning for in planning and, and urban design. And oftentimes it is about uh, the downtowns the, or the neighborhoods that um, need to, to be remodeled, revitalized, whatever that might be. And so um, there's tremendous value to having people while they're experiencing the issues that um, that we're addressing, having them participate, but at the same time, uh, we don't have habit on our side. Like we look at it as habit versus discovery. And yeah, uh, when you look at uh, a, an app like Yelp or uh, things like that, that's something that people that comes to mind. It's like, hey, I'm hungry. I want to have lunch. Let me look up what the next place nearby is, so they they know that they can use their phone for it. But that's not the case for planning and for a lot of the things that we deal with in local government. And so that's why we, we think that discovery is really important in that case to, uh, to show um, maybe a, a plan or, or a streetscape or something like that in, uh, on a sign and then ask them to provide their feedback while they're there. And so like really this sort of having these cross media strategies that drive people from experiencing the built environment to participating in the virtual environment. I think that's that's key. That's And that's exciting. That's part of what we really love to do right now. Uh, because, yeah, there isn't that much to, to look at at this point. Sweet. Sweet. Well, cool. Well, speaking of looking at things, do you want to take a little bit of time to show us uh, some of the latest and greatest from Engaging Plans, which is, yeah. can I call that your flagship platform? Because that's kind of the, I mean, my understanding would be that that's kind of the main 
platform, and then there are right. So I would call it sort of the, our um, uh, our entry or, or sort of our umbrella that a lot of our other tools live in. We have a lot of tools that I would say are more exciting than engaging plans itself, but. Um, I think what it, it solves a very um, core problem that we're experiencing that oftentimes, like as far as I can tell, none of uh, the other tools that are currently available uh, for public engagement solve, which is sort of the basic information needs. Um, and so uh, what we tried to do over the last couple of years is build uh, a website toolkit that's specifically targeted at um, planning projects, meaning it makes things like event management, document sharing, um, building surveys, uh, answering frequently asked questions, maintaining a mailing list, all those key features that everybody really needs. And then uh, having the more exciting and more in-depth sort of participation tools on top of that, uh, that's sort of really our, um, our goal with engaging plans. And that's why it's very low cost. It's uh, something that we often uh, pretty much bring into all our projects and then sort of figure out based on the needs of the client, whether they want to use one of our other tools or whether they want to use some of the other great tools that are out there, which typically plug in very nicely. Yeah. And that's, now, can, before before you show us, can you talk a little bit about why engaging? I mean, a lot of folks still have this picture in their head that if they're going to do a website, whether it's mm -hmm. for a department or a program or a, a planning initiative or whatever, so they're going to have to go find somebody to build the sucker from scratch. And right. that's very much not the case anymore, and you guys are... You know, engaging plans is a great example. So can, without, you know, kind of trying to teach us coding right. 101, can you explain a little bit why this right. is a, a relatively easy approach to use? Yeah, so I think you're right. So there's a couple of things that sort of would be an alternative here, uh, which are often used. So one is you host it on your own city website, but then you end up, because your IT team might not give you more than two or three static pages, you have these long and never-ending pages that are really hard to find. and uh, that's sort of one issue on the one side. The other piece is that there's obviously things like WordPress.com where you can build a website for free, which to a certain degree is a, is a great way to do that. The challenge that comes with it, we find, and that's sort of one of the things that we really focus on, that most of our clients tell us that they are worried that they have a hard time maintaining the site, that they need some staff person who needs to know a certain amount of HTML and a certain amount of user inter uh, interface and user experience design. Um, and, and oftentimes they don't have that on staff. And that's why uh, even though you get the basic website for free, the maintenance and uh, adding content and keeping everything up to date becomes a real hassle because you change, like let's say an event is over um, and this website needs to be updated, it might be multiple places you need to like change the feature on the home page and the footer and on the actual event page. And so these are the things that the, the workflows that we streamline. So the benefit of using engaging plans really is that it's really easy to maintain. There's just one quick admin dashboard. You can add a new event. It goes live on the website. <clears throat> the event is over. It automatically archives itself and um, in, in multiple places on the website. And so the, never, the website is never outdated in that way. And so there's a couple of pieces like that that make this really easy and simple. Uh, you don't need to know anything about information architecture to kind of have a site that's easy to understand for citizens and stakeholders. And so that's, I think, one of the core um, pieces. The other thing that is really nice, it has a couple of basic inf um, public engagement features built in, like surveys, like mm -hmm. asking simple questions that people can sort of in a discussion forum style um, answer. And then uh, the biggest benefit is it's uh, responsive, which is a new web design trend that um, makes sure that the website can be easily viewed on desktop devices, that can easily be viewed on uh, tablets, on um, cell phones, and also on, on kiosks that you might use in a public workshop setting mm -hmm. or in an open house setting. And um, because it does these things seamlessly without having to install anything, without um, any other requirements really, it lowers the threshold to um, participation and it gives everybody the opportunity to provide these sort of processes that I mentioned earlier where you could um, build a survey and have like ask people in your meeting or ask people on the street to go to this um, website and, and fill out the survey real quick. And obviously um, people could do, you know, theoretically you could do a survey on SurveyMonkey or, or Zoomerang or something. Right. The really nice thing here is that it's the same survey functionality. In some cases, right. I think it's a little bit better. 
but it's also right there with the same information. It's linked to the same mailing list. So you can have a mailing list connected to this mm -hmm. that then goes out automatically when there's a blog update or there's new information or there's a survey or an event. And you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel, reinventing the wheel, like you would right. using, trying to use a suite of um, unconnected free platforms. Right. It, it feels less like a patchwork of things and it's really one sort of, uh, it comes out of, the, out of uh, one box. And with, and with you know, staff shrinking in size and people trying to do these kind of things, you know, in their spare time, whether they're planning commission members or they're staffers, you know, it, it, it looks like it's going to be easier and it ends up being to, to use some kind of, you know, free thing, but it ends up really not. Mm -hmm. so, good, good. No. All right. You want to, you want to show us what you got? Yeah, definitely. Um, let me look here real quick. Okay. So, um, uh, let me just double check. I'm assuming you can see my um, see screen it. now. Yeah. And uh, this is an exciting project we've done in, in Guelph in Canada. Uh, How do you pronounce that? Um, Guelph. Wow. <laughs> and um, uh, you can see the, the homepage has sort of a nice ima uh, image slider that really helps sort of highlight some of the things that are currently going on in the project. It was about and a community. I'm sorry, for non-tech people, the image slider is that big picture across the top that keeps changing. Right, exactly. And um, a couple of sort of call-out blocks with background information and ways to get involved. Mm -hmm. And um, typically these sites, um, looking at them, this is sort of our basic version where um, we customize them to a point where it's very city or, or community specific. Um, with their color scheme, logos, background information, things like that. And as I mentioned before, as you start looking at this from different devices, you can see how the content changes and wraps around. And then again, once we go to a mobile format, you can kind of see that, for example, the navigation changes to um, be easily uh, usable on a mobile device. And all the content kind of wraps around and uh, becomes a lot easier to access. And just to kind of make it clear what Chris was just doing there, um, when he clicked those boxes across the top, he's actually not on the website. He's on the developer platform. And he's showing what, the, what it ends up looking like on a desktop versus a tablet. Right. This is a nice simulator that um, gives us a couple of different um, options to look at. For example, what it would look like on a tablet, on a tablet in the upright format, on a cell phone when you have it sideways, and then again on a cell phone when you have it uh, upright. So that's kind of a, a nice way to demo these kinds of tools. And I just wanted to show that real quick because you get the idea quickly on how that uh, changes and evolves. And so, um, as you can tell, there's um, your typical features that any project website would need are in here from document sharing, or you can easily upload documents or link to documents that are on other pages or, or other resources and kind of filter them by your needs and sort of add categories to them to events and past events. Again, this kind of goes back to what I mentioned earlier that um, all the events that are listed here at some point were in the upcoming events list and then let's see, I don't know if they have anything upcoming right now. Yeah, there's a couple of events upcoming and as soon as those dates pass, they'll automatically move into the past events section. Um, and then there's a couple of other um, elements, for example, let me see, let me go back to the home page, um, a couple of surveys and things like that built in that allow people, oh, um, I haven't been to this website in a while, I have to say. So um, I don't know what they still <laughs> have uh, ongoing. But um, they used to have a project survey exactly here. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just a very simple sort of common card um, and a couple of other elements. That there they were a couple on that last page that were showing up as, as some kind of a feedback activity. Right. So that's sort of the basic version. And then what we, the other piece that we do is help larger projects that have specific needs with branding, um, in this case, the Imagine Central Arkansas project to build something on top of engaging plants that's very engaging. And I think this project will um, highlight very nicely sort of the different elements that we can bring to the table. So they wanted to have basically a large timeline, a very visual timeline that, that sort of documents the process. So as we 
goes further back in history, you can kind of see that there was a phase one that started. We had a kickoff event. Uh, you can learn more about the kickoff event. Um, had a couple of different um, exercise uh, or public engagement features built in, like this mm -hmm. treasure places exercise, and um, sort of uh, some quick elements of uh, to to get some feedback and, and some baseline understanding of what's going on, and uh, really. So, for example, some of the um, uh, the more advanced tools was this treasure places exercise where we asked citizens early on to um, submit their favorite places in town. Uh, you know this from the Cincinnati project we're doing together. Um, mm -hmm. the, in this case, they um, wow. they added really a ton of places across the region, and uh, people were able to log in and or not log in, but go to the website and rate those and um, comment on them. And again, they um, they could were able to add places without um, necessarily having to log in. So you see, it's a quick form. It actually uh, uses your phone's um, GPS location or your um, computer's location in this case, or you can do an address search. And again, all of this works on mobile phones, so you can do this while you're out and go uh, out and about and uh, upload, snap an image, upload it, get your location using your phone's current location and add that to, the ex uh, to this um, mapping exercise. That's just one uh, of the tools. This InfoGames plugin was another thing we brought to the table where, um, oh, this kind of zoomed out as I was scrolling, but um, the, the idea here was that uh, you provide some background information about yourself and then uh, see a personalized version of the state of the region plans. So we had uh, infographics kind of highlight. It was a 100-page document. And ultimately, we brought it down to like a couple of steps, uh, easily uh, making those uh, sort of understandable using uh, infographics. Mm -hmm. And then again, sort of depending on what age you put in on the first page, just would say um, average person is three years older than you or things like that. So really to get um, people to understand what this is about, what the region is facing by looking at it from their own perspective. Um, wow. So that's just a quick, there's a couple more bells and whistles to this, but um, I don't want to go into too much detail. Uh, that was really sort of a quick run through, I think through the basic features that come with it and then also what we do in certain projects to, um, to go beyond that. And, and add some of those other tools. And as I said, uh, this could be um, our tools, but we're talk we've been working with uh, some of the large other providers out there, like MindMixer, MetroQuest, and other people uh, that provide public engagement tools and really sort of using engaging plans as the base website and then adding the, whatever tools they um, see as the most beneficial to their process. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. That's a great demonstration, and that's the first time I've seen the um, the the infographic plugin um, in action. So oh, yeah. I, I don't know if people were seeing my face while you were showing that, but I like, oh, <laughs> oh, look at that. So no, so that's 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 really really cool. Well, let me ask you just one other question, mm -hmm. and uh, it's kind of a wrap up here, and that is that when you're Dealing with a new community, you're dealing with a client, and you've shown a couple of, of larger regions like Central Arkansas. Mm -hmm. um, you've got some very large clients. You've got some pretty small clients. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of some of the the first things that you need those folks when you're when you're starting to work with a new community mm -hmm. or a new a new client? What what do they need to have? What do they need to be prepared to figure out? What do they need to be to be thinking about in order to go into a process like this in an you know, an efficient and effective manner? Well, the, the, yeah, that's a good question. I, I think more often than not, we're brought into this through an RFP process, in which case they've already outlined what they want, which is sometimes nice, sometimes also restricting because the uh, clients tend to learn, uh, as we all do, later on what they really need once they're in the middle of the project, not a year ahead. Um, but in a, in, if we have the opportunity, oftentimes it works best and that's sort of to be the best start. If we have some early meetings to kind of figure out what their needs are, help them like present a couple of different options of what they could be doing uh, throughout the project and then sort of figure out the right scope that way. And, um, and then we oftentimes, uh, as we set these things up, we, all our tools are built with the with the mindset that we want the client or uh, to be able to maintain them 
uh, the tools themselves, meaning putting new updates in there, updating events and things like that, just because we feel like if the more steps there, there are in the way to get these things started uh, and updated, the more cumbersome that becomes. And so, um, and the less likely to be used. Yeah, like, exactly. So, like, usually it's really just a one hour uh, sort of web meeting, like we're doing right now, mm -hmm. uh, that is necessary with like a screen sharing tool to um, get them all the basic things that they need to know um, and train them on, on using the tool. And then they're up and running, and we, we're there to assist them with technical questions and obviously with like some of the customizations that come later on in the process. Um, but, but that's really sort of all we need to start. And as I said, like we have a good amount of experience sort of on, um, on best practices, on what works and what doesn't, uh, on how to get people engaged from seeding the conversation to making sure you're, uh, uh, you're finding good time frames on how, to, uh, how long to engage citizens and how to communicate with them afterwards. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we're there to answer these questions and to help uh, guide them through that process. And it typically sort of depends on how much they feel like they're capable of doing that themselves, or sometimes we just come in as a tech provider. And then there's other times where we're brought in as, as sort of consultants to help them figure these things out and, and organize the process and things like that. So it, it really depends on the client and what their needs are. Cool. Cool. That's really well said, Chris. So thanks, thanks. a ton. Any, any parting words for the folks at Planners List? No, I, I, I'm, yeah, we're very excited for this opportunity and uh, I'm sure that with the video there's some contact information. So if anybody has some questions coming out of this, we're here to answer them and would be happy to learn about what, what they're working on. Absolutely. Cool. Thanks a ton, Chris. I Thank appreciate you. it. And uh, this has been Della Rucker for uh, Wise Economy Workshop and Planners Web.